Hey fellow gamers, it's Cozy Mel and I'm here with a Coral Island video for you. In this video, we are going to talk about a few things that you might need to know before you start your very first day. Obviously, it's not the first day on this character. However, this is a character that I'm using to make videos. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is that you have to sleep to save. So when it is the end of your day here on Coral Island, you're going to want to go to sleep in your bed. And if you turn the game off without going to sleep in your bed, it will be as if that day never happened. Okay, that's kind of important to know. Um, no one told me that, so I found out the hard way. <laughs> You will turn the game back on and you'll be at the beginning of the day that you were on the last time that you slept. So you don't have a save button in this game. There's no manual save and it doesn't really save as you go along. It saves when you go to bed. Okay, so that's number one. Also, there are only 28 days in each season. You start on spring one and it goes to spring 28. So what you need to know beforehand is that just like in most other farming games, you are going to be donating to bundles. And the two bundles you donate to are in the museum and also at the goddess altar in the lake, the lake altar for the goddess, okay? And I would, you you do it how you want to do it, but I would uh, go ahead and put a preference on the goddess altar first and the museum second and keeping things for yourself third. <laughs> and because there's things the goddess needs in order to open up ways for you to have fast movement and things like that on the island that you really want and need right away, you want to make sure you don't miss out. And in the spring, there is a tiger beetle that you have to catch with your net. And the tiger beetle is actually the fastest bug in the game. So it's kind of a bad deal <laughs> that they would do that to you. But on my controller, I push and hold down X. And this gives me the little bit of a viewfinder. And when the bug is in that viewfinder, the bug will turn green. I let go and you try to catch him in the net. The tiger beetle being the fastest beetle, the fastest bug in the game, ground crawling bug, very difficult to catch. I know people who have played for three years and never caught him. He's only available in the spring and he's only available in the daytime. You have spring day one to 28 to try to catch this beetle. And there's uh, various places all around that you will find him almost anywhere in the daytime. I have seen this tiger beetle right along here before. I have never caught him. I've tried several times, <laughs> but I have never caught this particular beetle. So just so that you know, I have seen him right here close to the farm on this little path. And this is to the east side, as if you were going into town. But that's just one spot. You can find him on the beach. You can find him on paths through the woods. There's a, a lot of different places. And you want to try to get him into your little viewfinder and then catch him. You only have 28 days to do this. If you don't do it, you can't finish that bundle with the goddess. And therefore, you'll have to play a second year of the game, at least spring of a second year so that you can catch him and turn him in. If you're not a completionist and you don't care, if you don't complete things in one year, then don't you dare worry about it. It's not that big a deal, but I want you to know because no one told me. And it was the middle of summer in my game before I found out, and it was way too late by then. So I knew I, you know, I wasn't going to have a chance to finish that bundle. Another thing is fishing. There's a fish called the gator gar. This gator gar is even harder. The gator gar is extremely difficult, and that is because he's only available in the spring, and that's day one through 28, and he's only available if it rains. Now, I have had people tell me that they played their entire spring and only had one day of rain. It could happen that you don't have any rain, or you could get lucky and have five or six days of rain in your spring. So, you know, what you want to do is go to the lake or a river. 
not an ocean. And then you want to get out your fishing pole. And again, you press and hold X on my Xbox controller. And that lets you cast out. And then you're going to tap, tap, tap on the X. You're not going to hold it down because the fish will break your line. So you just let the fish wear himself out. And you're just going to keep a rhythm. You can actually say it to yourself. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And eventually your little fish will start going across, but you won't break the line. As long as you only hold it down for a couple of seconds like that. And then one and two, three and four. One and two and three and four. And that way the line won't break. Otherwise with this little dinky fishing pole that you get in the beginning, even this crawdad that I just caught can break your line. Now, once you catch this crawdad in your pond at your house or here in this uh, little creek next to your house, put him away in one of your chests and save him because there will be a festival where they have a pot of food just like in Stardew Valley and you have to donate to that pot of food and you're going to want to donate that crawdad. And remember, the gator gar will only bite when it rains, and you're only going to have a day or two of rain in those first 28 days of spring, so keep that in mind. If it rains, don't go to the mine, don't go diving, don't do your farm work. Just go ahead and get your fishing pole. Go to the lake or a river in the forest and fish for that darn gator gar, and hopefully you'll catch it. Okay, the other thing that I want to say is that you need to do a little bit of all things. So if you have a day, like it's already 11.20 a.m. here, but if you have a day where you wake up in the morning, you might um, make a plan for how you like to handle things. So you might get out your watering can and go ahead and water your plants. And this is only until you have sprinklers and you will get sprinklers in spring. So when you're trying to clear your farm, you're going to run out of stamina. You're going to run out of energy. You can see the bar up in the top left with the blue in it. See how fast it's going down? I am losing half my energy just watering my plants this morning. And that's kind of the way it goes at the beginning. And you really don't have much to eat in the very beginning. So that makes it kind of hard. But once you've watered, you can go ahead and put your watering can away. Now, if it's the first two days, you don't have access to a fishing pole or a bug net. You can't go diving and you can't go in, into the mines yet. So what you want to do is forage and you can learn the map while you're doing it. So take your tools with you. Um, I would say you do not need to take your pickaxe with you. That's a mining tool. So I'm going to go ahead back over here to the trunk and I'm going to put my pickaxe away. And then um, I'll also put away this stuff that I've already caught and picked up um, just to get it out of my bag. But you're going to want your hoe. Now, the reason is you're going to find four leaf clovers on the path when you're out and about. And so you're going to want to have that hoe because it is the only thing that will dig up a four-leaf clover safely for you. Now I'm going to push Y, which is my inventory. And when you get to your inventory, you can grab your hoe and move it over closer to the front. So, you know, maybe put it right there. Your scythe is what you're going to use to get big, huge weeds out of the way if you can't walk through them because you can't jump over them. So those are, you know, your scythe and your bug uh, net and your hoe and your fishing pole. And then the other thing I have on my bar is candied tree seeds. And that's the only thing you have to eat the first day. And so if you run out of energy and you can't even walk back home, you'll need those. Now I have left the farm to the north. And if you turn right and then turn left, you can make a little U shape. This U shape is really important for you to know because this is going to take you to the carpenter. The first thing that the game will ask you to do is go here to the carpenter as soon as you have 50 wood and 20 rocks and they will upgrade your house a little bit for you. 
So that that's why you need to know how to get here. And you can look on your map and it'll tell you that you are at the carpenter. But first, it's hard to find it the first day. So I just wanted to show you how to find it. Now I'm gonna use my hoe on a four leaf clover and I got some free seeds. And these aren't seeds that give you junk like the ones in, um, well, you know, some of the other farming games I won't mention. <laughs> these actually give you regular crops for the season you're in. So you can grow them now or you can save them for winter because sometimes you can't buy any seeds in the winter time at all and you'll have to grow the ones that you found while you were walking around. Okay, so once we've gone to the carpenter, if we keep walking toward the north, but right behind this building is the hot springs and this will be filled with hot steamy water. They aren't right now because they're broken. But you can do two things for the goddess. And when you do fill out two groups for the goddess of bundles that you donate to, then the hot springs will magically be fixed and you'll be able to go in them. And then once you do that, you can sit in the hot springs and you can get all your energy back. Now over here at the very top of the map, and I can show you on the map at the very top, this is a little salesperson. He's only here on Saturday and Sunday. He's a crazy old hippie. And he sells one important thing. And it is a scarecrow. And I bought it yesterday. And you're only allowed to get one. This ordinary scarecrow will cover about 12 blocks of 9 by 9 um, where you are planting your plants, whereas the scarecrow you're allowed to make right now will only cover one nine by nine block. This costs 290 gold. So you will have to get enough flowers and plants and shells and things while you're out and about and sell them so that you have the money to buy that scarecrow. But you're going to want that scarecrow as soon as you can get it. And then while you're walking around, you might want to try to notice to see if you see any bugs. I wasn't looking and I missed a bug. But um, if you do see a bug, you will try to catch it with your bug net. But you might not be very successful at first or maybe you'll be really good at it. I really wasn't very good at it at first. But I can try to catch this butterfly. But no, I'm not going to get it. Ah. So it will see you after a while, the little circle will come together and then you can't catch it. But if they're coming right towards you, that's the best time, just like that. If you can get in their path so that they are coming straight at you, they will normally not smell you right away. And so you have a second to get them to turn bright green. And when they do, let go of that button and swing that net and hopefully you'll catch a butterfly like I just did. But that was probably, you know, <laughs> pretty lucky because I'm not usually all that good at it. And then straight this way, also way up high on the map, is the mine. Now you won't have access to the mine until about the third day, but I can show you on the map. This is where it is. Now, if you want to see farther down on the map, this big brown part is your farm. That's how big your farm is. Your farm is as big as, I don't know, a tenth of the darn map. It's really big. And you have to clear that all yourself. But that's your farm. And up here is the mine that you'd be walking to. And right over here is where the guy sells you the scarecrow on Saturday or Sunday, your first weekend. And way over here, this was where the spa was, the hot spring that you're going to fix up. And way over here is the lake. So this lake is where the goddess is, and this is where you're going to go as soon as you have a dream about the goddess and someone tells you, go to the lake and make an offering. You're going to walk from your house all the way to that lake, and you're going to make your offerings. And once you start making offerings, once you please the goddess enough, she will open up fast travel points for you. And the fast travel points are going to make a huge difference in your life. So you really want to get those. Okay, we're going a little bit long, so I'm going to try to just quickly close up here. But what I do want to tell you is that once you have access to the mines and to going down and diving under the ocean, those two activities are so much fun that you won't want to quit. 
but you have to be very careful not to run out of your stamina completely, um, you know, or you'll have a hard time getting back home. And you also want to be careful to not ignore your other skills. So even though it's fun to be mining and it's fun to be under the ocean cleaning up the oil spill, you might want to do that for four or five hours in a day and then come back home. And I know, not fun, but you want to come back home, get your bug net and your fishing pole and go out and catch two fish, catch two bugs. You know, whatever you can do to start that collection, because it is very difficult to um, actually get enough bugs and enough fish to fill out all your donations with the museum and with the goddess. If you don't start on the very first day, you'll have a difficult time. Especially you need to get that gator gar and you need to get that um, uh, tiger beetle. So, you know, those are actually your job from the beginning. But also, um, you saw that we could pick flowers. I want to show you this right here. You pick this flower. You can sell the flowers at first, or you can make them into bouquets. Uh, don't give the flowers individually to the townspeople. They don't like them. But if you take five of them and make them into a bouquet, they like that. And that was a mushroom that we just picked, and you can eat the mushrooms. So pick as many mushrooms as you can find and save them up and bring them along when you think you're going to run out of energy, and then you can eat them. So that helps you a whole lot. And like I said, after a couple days, you will have some things done at the altar for the goddess. And once you do, you can actually get a couple of spots that you can go to with fast travel. So you will be able to go up to this and fast travel to the goddess like I just did there. And you will magically appear right in the middle of the lake in front of the goddess's altar. And if you have something to donate, you donate to her. Now, I was given these when I finished the essential resources. I donated all these things. You can give five of any seed. I gave five pine cones. You give 10 sap. 10 fiber, 10 stone, and 10 wood, and fill that out. And once you do, then the goddess will give you your first connections so that you can do some fast traveling. So that's really, you, you just really want to do that. The other one she gives you right away when you start doing that is the diving pier so that you can go out here once you become a diver, which is about day eight, I think, and you can go diving under the ocean. And when you get down, you kind of go down on an anchor and you land in the ocean. And then you're going to use your um, scythe to clean up trash. So you will clean up trash and you will also find treasures. And the treasures will mostly be donated. And if you find duplicate treasures that you don't need to donate again to the goddess or to the uh, museum, then you can sell those. And that's where you'll start getting the most of your money. There's also some sea life on the ground and you can pick it up. So if you pick up this sea life, like this shell I just picked up, you can eat it. So you want to pick those up and don't leave them behind. Take them all home with you. It's food and you don't have any food the first few days. And this is the kelp. So you definitely want to get the kelp. That's your main job down here is to try to get the kelp and to try to get some food to eat and to clean up the ocean floor and open up, uh, you know, the cleaners. And I will show you that in another video. You can also try to catch some of this sea life with your bug net, but it is very difficult. But I just got a jellyfish. Yay! That's called a cannonball jellyfish. Now, if I look at my inventory, you can see when you point at it that it needs to be donated and it needs to be offered. It needs both. So you will have to have two of these, one to donate, one to offer. Any you get after that, you can sell for good money. So, you know, you want to make sure while you're down here cleaning that you do pick up some food, if at all possible, and some donations and some treasures. When you're finished, you can exit on the anchor and it takes you right back up to the diving pier. 
So once you have landed back up on the diving pier and you have done enough donating that you actually have your um, little uh, bonus movement, you can take it right over to your farm. But the first few days, you need to leave yourself enough time to walk home so that you get home before midnight. You have to go home and go to bed at midnight. You can stay out until one o'clock, um, you know, and barely get in at one o'clock. However, if you do that, you're going to wake up the next morning with half your energy and you don't have enough energy as it is. Now, if you get back home and you still have some energy, by all means, please clean your plot. Um, because you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to clean the whole plot and you might as well get started. <laughs> so, you know, you'll get out your ax so that you can chop down a tree. Um, you'll use your scythe to clean up some of the weeds and some of the trash, you know, to cut your way through. And, um, you'll also use your, uh, pickaxe from mining, your pickaxe is how you'll take out these big rocks and your ax is how you cut down trees. You might want to leave a couple trees uh, somewhere on your farm that you're going to get sap out of later for maple syrup and things like that. So don't cut down all your trees, but you know, for the most part, you're going to cut down a lot of your trees. I tried to clear a path to my beach entrance because if you have to walk to the beach, you're going to have to go all the way south on your farm. And then you'll go out this little back entrance and this will take you to the diving platform and the beach. And that's how you get there if you don't have fast travel. And here's one of those little four leaf clovers. So you can use your hoe and get that. And that, um, you know, just gives you something you use to make fertilizer that time. But it could have given you a seed or it could have given you a mushroom, all those kind of things. Okay, I think that's probably enough for you to be ready to start your first day. But the most important part is that, you know, try to make yourself do a little of everything. <laughs> don't just go mining or don't just go to the ocean. You know, make sure that you do a little bit of farming, water your crops and things. Make sure you catch a couple bugs and catch a couple of fish and, and try to level up all your skills. And again, you can just push, well, it's Y on my controller, but go to your UI and you can see how you're doing. Um, with your actual farming level one, you know, it, uh, your, your foraging, how many flowers have you picked and mushrooms have you picked the mining, the diving, um, catching, you're catching bugs, you're fishing, all these things. You can see what level you're at and this is your skill tree. So each, every other level that you go up, you get to pick a new skill. So that's kind of nice. So you can do that. This is your love letters. No, these are the people that live in town. And any of them that are single, you can have a relationship with any of them that you want that are single. So you talk to them whenever you see them and give them uh, gifts and presents. And pretty soon they'll like you. You have to get 10 hearts. And this is your map. This is your inventory. This is where you do your crafting. And it's nice. You can do your crafting anywhere as long as you have the stuff in your storage chest that you need. So if you're away from home and you run out of energy and you've got seeds and sap at home in your chest, you can click on this and you can hit the button and you have just made yourself food that you can eat right now. So that's really handy. Um, this is a place where you keep track of all of the quests you need to do. And this is your town rank. And right now our town rank is an F as in Frank. <laughs> and you want to get it up to a C. Uh, before Christmas. <laughs> so no, you want to get it to a C before uh, winter because otherwise you won't be able to buy any seeds at the grocery store where they sell the seeds. But you know, if you don't make it, you can always plant all those wild seeds that you dug up and saved, right? And this just gives you your player information. Okay, that's it. So I hope this uh, helps you have a really good start on your very first day in Coral Island or your first few days. And I hope you will like and subscribe and ring that bell and watch all my videos. And I will see you in the next one.